Okay, so um, that's the end of the second exercise. If you have any questions, drop them into the uh, question window, and we'll go ahead and adjust them now. And uh, while we're waiting for some questions, go ahead and try out a few different um, sets of scale values and uh, values in your EY slider. Okay, so while you're experimenting um, and maybe typing in the question window, we're going to talk a little bit about um, where we've started in terms of our collection of patterning techniques, right? We said that patterning is grid plus influence plus action, right? Right now, our influence is just our list of scale values. Our action is scale. And our original grid is just a triangular grid. Now, we're doing that just for simplicity's sake in these initial exercises. But um, the substrate or the initial grid or set of points can be anything, right? There are a number of different ways to create uh, distributions of points, right? So if you take a look under the vector tab, there's uh, all the basic grid types that we've kind of started to work with, right? Square, triangular, et cetera, even radial. There's also populate 2D that will give you a random collection of points. There's populate geometry if you have like a surface and you want points on it. That will give you random points on the surface. And there are a number of other ways to create points, right? If you have a curve, you can divide those curves into points. If you had a surface, you could divide the surface into points. And there's also a number of types of ways to cr create points or tessellations that can give you points under the mesh tab. So basically, if, you think, if we're talking about patterning, right, this is our collection of objects that create our grid. This is our collection of objects that gives us influence. And this is our action. Well, I guess this and this. First create a circle, then scale it, right? So we've set it up this way for this particular exercise, but that's not to say that you couldn't swap this out, right, if you wanted to divide a surface into points, right? So we'll take one second. I'll create a surface from a collection of cur a couple of curves, like if I did a loft. So I'm just making a surface in Rhino. If I were to bring that surface into Grasshopper by right dropping a surface object into the uh, canvas, right-clicking and saying set one surface, that allows me to reference that into Grasshopper. And I can plug that into S, and now I have points here. right? I can even share EX and EY, defining how many I'm going to have in either direction. Right, so now I have this, which is already different. It's not a regular distribution of points. Well, it is relative to the surface, but it's not regular in the kind of XY plane. So I could use that and just swap the input here for my grid points and get a different set of circles. Right? So now we have this kind of swelling, swelling circles that start to overlap as you get to here, which also is a pretty cool little pattern. Um, if you didn't want overlapping circles, you have to do a couple more tricks once you get back here to make sure the scale values are appropriate. But um, the point being that you can use any initial collection of points uh, within this exercise in order to create a pattern based on repeating scale values. Uh, so the only difference that we have here um, between the what we saw in the PowerPoint, this, and the one that um, that I've made is I may have chosen a couple of different scale values and maybe a different EY value. So if you wanted to reference um, the the to create the image that we referenced in the PowerPoint, you should be able to just open up the exercise file that we gave you, and it should be that pattern exactly. Just find the right preview. All right, I think it, this may be that one. All right, so it's just a matter of calibrating the settings that you want if you wanted something like this. It looks like 
big, smaller, small, small, repeat, and then really small. Okay, and uh, the another question is, okay, well, I, I like what I've got here. Um, this one's, uh, let me actually put it back to the one that I had where I really liked. That actually looks like the pattern that we had in the pr presentation. All right, I like this one, right? So I like this one because I can see kind of what the result of the pattern is. And um, a, one of the questions was, okay, well, I like this. I want to be able to control the scale values with just a few values, just a few, right? I only am specifying five values. That coupled with my grid gives me a pretty interesting and already dynamic pattern. But let's say I want it to be slightly different. Each, each circle maybe has a slightly different um, uh, scale value, right? Or another way to put that is, instead of it always having the exact same uh, scale value, what if every once in a while it kind of shifts? Or let's say the pattern had a little bit of jitter to it, right? So there is a way to do that, just by adding one more object and um, in, in the Grasshopper Canvas. So if we go to the Sets tab, under Sequence, there's the Jitter object, which randomly shuffles a list of values. So if you drop that in, this asks for the list that you want to shuffle, the strength of the shuffling, right? No shuffling is zero, uh, complete shuffling is one, and the uh, seed of the of the shuffling engine, which it wants a, it's a pseudo-random engine, so it needs a seed value to start. So let's go ahead and drop in a slider for J. That's going to say, how much do you want to shuffle? And I'm going to turn this all the way to zero to start. Then I'm going to drop in my um, repeat data result into L. That's the list I want to shuffle. And then lastly, I'm going to make an integer slider for my seed um, so I can test out some different seed values. All right, so and again, the little trick that we showed earlier is if you double click in the canvas, I want my seed, possible seed values to start at two. Maybe my current one is 13, and my uh, maximum is uh, 51. So these, this is gonna be my seed. This is my jitter strength. Plug this in and then replace F, right? So because I specified zero, there's going to be no shuffling. As I move this slider, just the slightest bit, it's going to shuffle all those values around. So what was a repeating pattern that kept uh, repeating the same values over and over again is basically like a deck of cards that you're shuffling a couple of times, right? So if you go all the way down really close to zero, you might still be able to see the pattern but it's going to be a little bit different as you move through it. So I've got this all the way down at 0 0.005. We can go even down to 0 0.001, and you'd see the just slight shift in the pattern. All right. That's a really good question, and this is a little bonus that we didn't actually include in the file, so, um, so I like that a lot, the, including the jitter. Okay, great stuff. And again, this will all be repackaged and uploaded for you as a, a alternate instructor file. Okay, so uh, save, really good questions. And let's go uh, on to the, uh, the next exercise. Okay, 